watching AYV Television. Sierra Leone decides when it breaks at the polling stations, we are your first and most reliable witnesses. We deliver a crisp and concise as usual. With our modern broadcasting equipment, seamless coverage all around. From all angles and perspectives on TV, radio, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. We serve you with nothing but unadulterated information. For sure, we are your trusted election of. We will give you a round-the-clock update and a precise look and picture of the election. We will uncover and prove the business side of the pools. Who's buying whose vote and why you should be concerned. We will assemble all the experts shaping the conversation. Before, during and after the elections. We are ready. The tax are ahead. We are more than ready. We are your home of all things credible, factual, and all times balanced. AYV. 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 Sierra Leone decides when it breaks at the polling stations, we are your first and most reliable witnesses. We deliver a crisp and concise as usual. With our modern broadcasting equipment, seamless coverage all around. From all angles and perspectives on TV, radio, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. We serve you with nothing but unadulterated information. For sure, we are your trusted election of. We will give you a round-the-clock update and a precise look and picture of the election. We will uncover and prove the business side of the pools. Who's buying whose vote and why you should be concerned. We will assemble all the experts shaping the conversation. Before, during and after the elections. We are ready. The tax are ahead. We are more than ready. We are your home of all things credible, factual, and all times balanced. AYV. 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 All right, Sierra Leone decides 2023. Um, we continue to look into the activities leading up to the 2023 polls. And today, Democracy puts government in the hands of the people, whether by voting, peacefully protesting, or exposing government corruption in the press. Citizens take charge of their government and are free to criticize their leaders without fear of punishment. This is what the American Embassy in Sierra Leone puts out September 15th, the International Day of Democracy. The day is observed annually on September 15th to make societies collectively aware of their democratic rights, and the measures that are taken by the government to protect these rights. The theme for this year is importance of media freedom to democracy, peace and delivering on the sustainable development goals. Tonight, we are putting Sierra Leone's democracy into context in light of recent happenings in the democratic space. My name is Samuel Wise Bangura and this is a on Sunday. Sierra Leone decides when it breaks at the polling stations, we are your first and most reliable witnesses. We deliver a crisp and concise as usual. With our modern broadcasting equipment, seamless coverage all around. From all angles and perspectives on TV, radio, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. We serve you with nothing but unadulterated information. For sure, we are your trusted election of. We will give you a round-the-clock update and a precise look and picture of the election. We will uncover and prove the business side of the pools. Who's buying whose vote and why you should be concerned. We will assemble all the experts shaping the conversation. Before, during and after the elections. We are ready. The tax are ahead. We are more than ready. We are your home of all things credible, factual, and all times balanced. AYV. 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 AYV.
All right, good evening and welcome to AYV on Sunday. Today we shall be reviewing Sierra Leone's democracy. And um, here with me I have a star-studded panel of people who are in touch with the issue. Um, they would help me unpack this conversation um, in the next two hours. I have with me lawyer Rashid Dumbuya. Um, he is executive director for Legal Link, a human rights organization um, offering free legal representation to victims. Rashid, good, mo good evening and welcome to AYV on Sunday. Thanks for having me. I'm grateful. Family. Right, I have um, media, social, and political commentator um, Lawrence Williams, who's been following the Sierra Leone's governance system for the longest of time. Lawrence, good evening and welcome to a Wedding Sunday. Good evening, Samuel, and good evening to panelists. Right, I have the um, Director of Communications from the National Commission for Democracy, Reverend Jubilee Akabo. Reverend, good evening and welcome to. Good evening, and thanks for hosting me. All right. Um, Unfortunately, we've, be, we've received a message from Lena Thompson, a uh, lecturer at the Political Science Department at Frabe College, uh, the University of Sierra Leone, um, that um, she cannot make it to the studio um, tonight. Um, we wish her speedy recovery. She just called in sick. But you, our viewers, can always follow us on our AYV Sierra Leone Facebook page, Drop your comments, share your thoughts with us. We'll find time to go through some of them as always. In case you are listening to us on FM 101.7, you're welcome. Watching us on AYV Channel 33, you're welcome. And following us on all the different social media platforms. Um, Reverend, I'm going to start off with you for obvious reasons. Um, you are the gatekeeper of Sierra Leone's democracy. I mean, the permanent infrastructure charge with the responsibility of looking after Sierra Leone's democracy. Um, we just joined the rest of the world um, in commemorating International Day of Democracy. Um, th this year's commemoration looked at how media freedom can help in promoting um, democracy, peace, and looking at Sierra Leone's um, path right now to the 2023 polls. What, how would you describe or how would you situate Sierra Leone's democracy in a context that many would say this is Sierra Leone. Um, <clears throat> thank you so much. Um, I must confess that um, it, it, it's, it's a challenging subject to deal with, mm -hmm. but um, we'll do our best to focus attention on the, the things that matter most. Mm -hmm. um, we'll put it this way. In, in assessing our democracy, Focusing attention on the key tenets, mm -hmm. we can say we've come a long way, but we still have a long way to go. Mm. We are not where we used to be, but we are not there yet. Mm. And um, we must come to terms with that reality. That you're looking at, um, say, the Second Republic of Sierra Leone, mm. commencing 1996 to date, we've made um, significant strides. But I'm um, considering the fact that we are just looking at less than 40 years. Mm. We, Sierra Leone's democracy is not even up to a generation yet. Right. So, so we, 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 are not, we are not making a case for the things that are going wrong, mm. but we are also aware of the fact that for, for the almighty America, where we think um, it's mm. the beacon of democracy, they've been in this practice for, for more than 200 years, mm. and they still have their challenges. Mm. Look at, let's look at what happened under the, the tenure of... Uh, 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 um, Donald Trump. Mm. It was almost like reversing all of the gains of those number of years. Mm. But um, thankfully for them, there are strong institutions to resist whoever. Mm. They cannot tolerate a dictator mm -hmm. to be in charge of um, governance in, in, in America for, for, for a very long time. Mm. But this part of the world, uh, we, 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 we have to face up with that reality because uh, uh, the, the, the truth of the matter is that the people themselves who are actually the, the sovereign in, in the context of the governance of the state, mm -hmm. at times are not even aware of how much power they are, that um, if democracy is to work, the people must be cognizant of what their rights are, of course in the context of their responsibilities. Mm. When they know what these rights are, and they know the channels that should be employed to ensure that they enjoy these rights, nobody will take it from them just like that. But, um, is, is Sierra Leone's democracy thriving or one that would best be described as barely surviving? Um, 
it, it's still appropriate to say our democracy is still fragile. Mm. So you can now make uh, uh, your deduction if it is um, thriving or barely surviving. Mm -hmm. It is still a fragile democracy. Mm. Uh, uh, um, I have just mentioned the, the, the issue of years. Right. How many years for a second republic? 40 years, mm -hmm. less than a generation, which um, we might, we might uh, 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 define as 40 years at mm -hmm. least. If you look at other democracies, for how long they've existed, of course they have strong institutions in place. <coughs> Things are, they, they face challenges. But in our case, mm. we take one step forward, and it's almost like we are taking two steps backward. Mm. And uh, that is so challenging. But honestly, the person you are talking to is not coming from the school of pessimism. Mm. I, am a, I am an optimist. And looking at what, whatever effort we've made mm. so far in terms of the institutions that are in existence and in terms of uh, the, the, the level of understanding that people are getting, especially mm. because of um, the emerging media, mm. social media has its um, good and bad sides. Mm. But honestly, it has helped immensely in awakening the consciousness of the people. Mm. Even though at times we misuse it, because that is something that um, for this recent um, commemoration, mm -hmm. I will not call it celebration, yeah. the UN Secretary General spoke about distrust and disinformation mm. that we are peddling. Mm -hmm. But of course, the one thing that, that as he also emphasized in his statement is the issue of um, polarization that is affecting governance institutions. Mm. Let, 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 uh, let, let me ask you this question, Reverend, just quickly. Um, y looking at what the um, US Embassy in Sierra puts out on the day itself when we, the world commemorated the International Day of Democracy, saying that democracy puts government in the hands of the people. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, whether by voting, peacefully protesting, or exposing um, government corruption in the press. Citizens ch take charge of their government and are free to criticize leaders without fear of punishment. Now, looking at the, I mean, other things mentioned here, is that the environment we live in? I mean, uh, so, so if that's really what democracy is, um, should, uh, are we qualified to say we live in a democratic state? Well, uh, um, thankfully, that is not the only yardstick that we employ to measure Democracy. how much yes, effort we are making democratically. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's a, it's, it's a reality. It's a, it, it should be the norm. Mm. The, going back to what the UN Secretary General said, right. he said, um, without press freedom, democracy will not thrive. Mm -hmm. And without freedom of expression, there is no freedom. So essentially, what the, the, the ambassador said mm -hmm. is reflective of his own society. Right. For me, he should have said we, we, should, not be, we should not be afraid. Mm. But it's like uh, uh, the way he puts it, he's it, 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 it presenting a picture as if, well, everything should be fine. Mm -hmm. That people understand what uh, uh, um, constructive criticism is in the mm -hmm. context of democracy. Yeah. But honestly, looking at our society, we know there are times when people are scared to say the slightest negativity against those that are in charge. Mm -hmm. People are scared. Right. That is just the truth. All right. But um, we need to work on that. Mm -hmm. And it comes with a, with a lot of civic consciousness. When we increase our civic consciousness on the side of law enforcement, and on the side of the citizens that are demanding that they enjoy their human rights, we'll see the right balance. All right. Let, let, let me quickly hear from um, uh, Lawrence Williams. Looking at Sierra Leone's democracy, um, Reverend has described it as a fragile one. Of course, many people have always said um, our fledgling democracy puts us in a scary state because of um, the accompanying um, blisters of what um, anti-democrats uh, have left behind. But looking at the context itself in Sierra Leone, um, are, are we added to a position that 
we've been taking the right um, the, the right I mean steps to addressing the challenges of um, a democratic state. Um, I'll take a cue from Reverend. <coughs> um, in his um, outset submission, he stated that uh, we are taking two steps forward, one step backwards. Two steps backward, one, oh, two step step, one step forward, two step backwards. Um, now, I think um, democracy can be discussed within the context of um, the elements that sustain peace <coughs> or peaceful societies and the structures mm. that actually promote and sustain democracy over time. So we can look at, for example, the conduct of periodic elections mm -hmm. yeah, as one critical element in a democratic space. Um, free, fair, credible, I mean, mm. periodic elections. We also look at um, um, political pluralism, the participatory aspect of democracy. Yeah. We also look at um, the respect and recognition of civil, civil liberties as well. Right. Yeah. We also talk about functioning of government in the, in the sense that, I mean, the functioning of good governance where, I mean, state institutions deliver mm -hmm. and meet the expectations of the people. We we'll also look at, I mean, the political culture, yeah? How we interact, how we perceive govern government and governance to be, and how we actually, I mean, interact with all of these, our contributions towards good governance, or otherwise, bad governance, whichever is the case. Mm -hmm. So within this context, we're able to, to establish whether our democracy is on a good footing or not. But let me cite um, one report, yeah? Mm. Um, I prepared some few notes. Um, a survey done by Pew in 2021, mm. that survey, the, the result of that survey, I guess, yes, it was published in October 2021. It shows that... Um, there's a distrust and disaffection with democratic political systems across the globe, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa. Mm. And the survey found out that um, for sub-Saharan Africa, the disaffection with political systems, mm -hmm. political and democratic systems, was at an all-time high because democracy is not delivering for many people. Mm. Now, let's go further. Um, the reasons for the rise in disaffection uh, with democratic systems are mainly driven by what? Disaffection with economic performance mm. of governments. Uh, disappointment with the lack of equality and fairness in politics. Cynicism about the commitment of the political elite to represent the voters' interest. And frustration with not being consulted about the issues that affect people's lives. Mm. Anger, again, anger about corruption and the vested interest of the political class. And the persistence of these problems, according to the report, often leads to pervasive cynicism about politics and a weaker detachment to democratic values and institutions. These factors, in my view, paved the way for the resurgence of coups in West Africa, we see what happened in Mali, we see what happened in Guinea and some other parts of the sub-Saharan, I mean, Africa region. Can, 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 I, can I just quickly take you on? The things you've just highlighted, um, Lawrence, mm -hmm. are, they, are they visible in Sierra Leone? Are, they, are, they, are, are we seeing them here? These are evident, evidence of what triggered the August 10 protest mm. and the events that followed, mm. yeah? And... Um, Last year, for example, um, the European Union Elections Observer Mission to Sierra Leone mm -hmm. noted, in particular, that there was a maximum distrust for the elections management bodies, chiefly among them, the Electoral Commission for Sierra Leone, the judiciary, and that of the police. Mm -hmm. Now, if this salient observation was not lost on the EU, Right, an independent 
observer mission, then it means that Sierra Leoneans should be awakened to the consciousness that state institutions are somehow not functioning as independently as they are meant to be. You, you, you know, when you say that, the myth, I say the myth because this is something I do not have facts to at the moment. The myth has always been that if party A is in power, all of these democratic institutions are influenced politically to fit, I mean, the context of those in power. I mean, you go back, it has always been the, the, the allegation that, oh, um, Dr. Ernest Bikrumah, I mean, we take the last two um, regimes, for example, the APC and the SLP. In the last 10 years, before the coming of the SLP into power, th those have always been the claims that the APC has always influenced democratic institutions and these institutions are not working in the interest of the people and if we're talking about democracy we've just mentioned and agreed that democracy is giving the people the power it's the people having the power to tell and show what they want and if that is not working you just again cited the report from the eu observe, um, elections observers mission that i mean talked about distrust in some of the fundamental institutions that should guarantee I mean, freedom that should guarantee rights, that should guarantee the rule of law, and that is, is eroding. Then, where do we put these institutions for effective and efficient delivery of um, state services? Now, um, the, Lomo, the Lome Peace Accord of 7 July 1999 particularly emphasized um, the importance of open, participatory democracy um, in a situation where I mean, it envisages that um, this open participative democracy was indispensable for the development of effective, transparent, accountable, and responsive institutions of governance in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. The Democracy Index 2022, I mean 2021, which was now published in 2022, mm -hmm. ranked Sierra Leone 97 among 165 I mean, independent states and territories, yeah? And we are classified, a democracy is classified as a hybrid um, regime. Now, there are um, various classifications depending on the, 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 the level of democracy that is practiced in each independent state. Mm -hmm. Now, the ranked countries um, on five scales, you have full democracies which in fact, according to the report, the, even the United States is not practicing full democracy because of some of the elements of um, flawed democracy that they identified within the US practice of democracy. They also have the second classification, which is flawed democracies. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, um, the third one, which is the hybrid um, um, regimes and the authoritarian regimes. We are classified as the third under the third category of hybrid regimes. Mm -hmm. Now, well, so one may ask, I mean, what does this mean to be classified as a hybrid regime? It simply means that um, popular trust in government and political parties has plummeted. It also means that or signifies that corruption and the lack of transparency and accountability continue to undermine popular confidence in government, in govern governance and democratic institutions. And there are so and so forth, uh, uh, so many things that are highlighted in the report, yeah? So we have come a long way as a country. Reverend made mention that um, between, I mean, the coming into effect of the Second Republic, mm -hmm. it's less than about 30 years. I mean, taking from 2002 to now, after the end of the war, it's about 20 something years, yeah? Or less than that. What are the gains that we've made as a country? Yes, we can say we conduct periodic elections. But mind you, the Global Peace Index of 2022, Sierra Leone dropped four places in the global ranking and one place in the regional ranking. And we are also categorized under the countries with positive peace deficits, which means that violence 
over time could increase their tendencies for civil unrest and violent demonstrations in countries that are listed in the posit positive mm -hmm. deficit category. We are not paying attention to all of these reports. We may say, yes, we are making gains in terms of I mean, expanding judicial access I mean, to remote co communities. But let's look at, I mean... Does that guarantee justice? Well, justice in itself, I think, of course, we have a legal mind here. Mm -hmm. We will want to, I mean, expound on that, yeah? Um, but for my view, I mean, justice is simply giving right to whosoever deserves it, All right. giving wrong to whosoever merits wrong, regardless of the status of the individual. All right. Stay with me, Lawrence. Let me bring in um, Rashid. Um, in. Rashid, looking at Sierra Leone's context in terms of democracy, what picture would you paint at this point? Yes, I think my words would be economical. It's fledging and facade. And I will say so because we have a semblance, mm. but the, there's a whole disconnect in terms of upholding the real um, tenets mm. of um, democracy. Because that's how we will be judged at the end of the day. So democracy is a, a system of government in which um, the people are the center and the will of the people thrives. So in other words, in short, it's the government of the people for the people the and by the people, yes. Mm. And of course, it um, has characteristics, features. So when you look at them, you can now tell, mm. you know, that indeed this is a democratic nation. So for example, we talk about free, fair, and credible elections. Right. It's one of the key features. An independent and impartial judiciary, mm -hmm. um, observation of the rule of law and constitutionality, respect for fundamental human rights, um, freedom of speech and the press, mm -hmm. um, oppression and recognition of multipartism, um, strong and independent institutions, an educated population, mm -hmm. um, democratic transition of power. So, these are some of the, the, the features. And of course, a thriving and well um, viable civil society uh, protecting the rights of um, dissenting voices and, and the like. So a professional police force mm -hmm. that respects fundamental human rights. So these are all the tenets. So now, if we are going to I mean, assess our democracy, um, we have to look at them, I mean, our democracy in the light of these mm -hmm. features, these tenets of democracy. And then we can now be fair enough to judge. So I said, it's fledging and it's facade. Because you may, you may, you may see some attempts, but the under, underlying, and when you go deep, you can see that it's mere facade. We're not really upholding this tenet as we, as we should. So, 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 you're so saying, in essence, you're saying there's a mm -hmm. semblance of democracy, but in, in, in actual sense, I mean, the practice is not. Yes, that's a, 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 a disconnect with the reality. The, go, going back by, um, by the features you've mm -hmm. mentioned, mm -hmm. some of the features you've mentioned. Yes. I mean, we, 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 we do organize, we do conduct periodic elections. Yes. We've, we, we, we've, we've done swiftly, um, I think, two trans, um, transition from one, gov one political party to another, from one government to another. We've enjoyed that. Yes. Um, the media generally, one will say, operates fairly and um, freely. And looking at all of these things, and of course, multi party um, pluralism, for example, we're seeing that thriving. Though we still continue to see the dominance of the two giants, mm -hmm. APC and SLPP. So, I, I, would I be safe to say, actually, there is democracy? Yes, yeah, so, so that, that, that's, the, that's the question we have here today. It's mm. about um, checkmating and lifting the veil to mm. see whether, in fact, we are doing what democracy really Go ahead. Uh, calls for. Mm -hmm. you know? So, it's not just enough to have um, elections, mm -hmm. all right? They should be free and fair and credible, free from fair, and free and fair, mm. all right? So it's about assessing it from that perspective, you know, and then coming up to conclude that indeed, yes, we have free and fair elections. So that is the commitment. Democracy is a commitment. Mm. You know, a whole country is saying, we will ensure that we put people at the center mm -hmm. and we respect their rights and we do things that will make sure and democracy thrives, right. and democracy exists in our nation. So, for example, take a look at the judiciary. I mean, where I'm coming from, that's, mm -hmm. that's my space. Yeah. We, we, we still, I mean, seeing in actual sense a lot of challenges in that 
I mean, Excellent. sector of the, of, of the nation. For example, I'll, I'll give you an, an example. So there's, there's some improvement in access. I mean, that's, that has to be acknowledged. Mm -hmm. But then when you talk about the administration of justice, so when they come before, mm -hmm. all right, how do we treat them? How do we ensure that justice prevails and there is equity and there is fairness in the process? Mm -hmm. I'll take, for example, we have a lot of matters now before. And the other day, I was even on, on air and I was asking question about a magistrate who presided over a case. Um, and then, you know, of an opposition uh, 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 um, accused person. Mm -hmm. And bail was granted by the magistrates. The next day, we learned that the magistrate is currently, you know, on leave, indefinite leave. Due. <laughs> All right, indefinite leave. <laughs> so even our labor, our labor yeah. laws does not allow for such to happen. Mm -hmm. So you start asking the question, do we still really have an independent, you know, an impartial judiciary? Mm. The, other, the other day also, we talked about Kamayemba's case. Right. The judge, after, you know, a year or so, eventually gave bail, mm -hmm. you know, to um, Kamayemba. And um, up to I speak to you, the bail, has not been approved by the master and registrar and the chief justice. Mm -hmm. So, and, and the cases that we are getting are not really holding tight. And we don't even know how far we are in that matter. Mm -hmm. So the judiciary, and there are a lot of cases that are still not being listed, mm -hmm. public interest matters. Right. So we are talking about the administration of justice. And these are things we have to call out because they, are, they form part of the fundamentals of a democratic society. Mm -hmm. You must have an independent and impartial judiciary that will be able to checkmate the excesses of state you know, apparatus and of course state functionaries and ensure that the will of the people you know, is respected. So it's about due process, it's about allowing the wheels of justice to turn you know, and turn faster. And a particular, is, I mean, it's a particular direction or in all directions? Yeah, so in all directions. So the rule of law. <laughs> why oh, ask the, why yes, ask the no, question? I agree with you. Why yes. ask the question? Mm -hmm. You know, yesterday I was having a conversation with some very senior um, um, government officials and even opposition members. Mm -hmm. I know we were having some, some talks. And what came up was, um, for example, the arrest of, the arrest of Mohammed, um, Honorable Mohammed Bangura, who's yes. standing trial. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the opposition asked, but wait a minute, we go back to the um, constituency 110 by election, where we saw government official, mm -hmm. and every, that was, I mean, it was violence at mm. its peak, mm. but mm. No, no arrest was made, it was very clear, but now we saw what happened there, and um, an opposition member has been arrested and mm. all of that, mm. and um, I mean, jokingly, the government official was saying, the man now waits, now we turn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I mean, th that was just a privileged conversation, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it speaks to mm -hmm. how the state is being governed. Mm -hmm. That when it's when when mm -hmm. it's it, it's the it, it, when it's red, mm -hmm. I mean everything good for the red guys. When it's green, it's everything good for the green guys. Nothing bad comes. So how then do we change that perspective, especially when we look at the law? Yes, we look at justice yes. that should um, be fair. Yes. So Samuel, I agree with you. So this, the the issues we are discussing here today, I'm sure. Um, it ranges as far back as, you know, independence, mm. all right? So mm. all of these um, state actors are, in one way or the other, guilty. APC, SLAP, mm -hmm. that have had the opportunity to rule us, they are all, f I, mean, I mean, wanting of these, these um, you know, uh, um, issues. But then, you see, what, what we don't want to see in our society, and I believe what will, should hold the society and serve as a, an effective check to exercise is, is the judiciary. So if you look at um, nations that are thriving, mm -hmm. you know, South Africa, for example, we just heard about the Kenya right. experience. You know, it's beautiful to see how the courts can come in to resolve Swiftly. and and set the tone mm -hmm. for democracy to be to fester. You know, just imagine Kenya's yeah. election. You know, the judges were so swift. You know, the whole nation was kept for 14 days mm -hmm. waiting. They did not give excuse and they did not, you know, say one or two things. They went to work. They, they knew this was a mandate they had to fulfill. Whole day and whole night they were on their, on, on, on their bench and making sure that this judgment is delivered within the expected time frame mm -hmm. to set the trajectory that indeed we have last say and we will determine justice at the end. Which is different in our so, case. Yeah, so that, that, that's, what, that's what every day I, I come and have opportunity, I talk to the judiciary. Mm -hmm. Because trust me, the executive arm, they will want to have their way mm. all the time. 
That's how they work. Right. They want to have their policies, they want to have their, their actions, their manifesto. Mm -hmm. So they, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they have a drive to get this done at all costs. So what serves as the arbiter and checker is the judiciary. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, there must be a place where we can all run to when our rights have been you know, infringed upon or violated or abused. And if they and, cannot keep the gates, what and, does and, that and present? Th that, is the, that is the problem we're having now. So, for, are we, for example, in South Africa? South Africa, the only institution currently that is holding the balance and ensuring that democracy thrives is the Constitutional Court. When people get the, to, the, to the Constitutional Court, I, I've been there, you will, you will realize that this is a strange place. Mm -hmm. You can sense that there is a separate spirit operating here. When you enter the court, you will know that justice is going to be delivered. So the, the government always is afraid when people take cases you know, against it to the constitutional mm -hmm. court. Because they know these are men who believe in justice, who will sacrifice their lives for the ends of justice. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example. In fact, one of them is a victim of the apartheid regime. He has one arm. So when he sits there to preside, having been a victim of injustice under a, an apartheid system, he has felt the pain. So the, 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 look, the right to water, the right to life, the right to health, we are not given by the, by the state. They were given by the courts, the constitutional court. So every day we call upon our judiciary that you are the last sucker of hope for mm -hmm. this nation. When the parliamentarians and the executive, they misbehave, you must teach them and show them that this is unacceptable in a democratic society. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm afraid of our democracy, the way we are going, because I cannot imagine a whole magistrate granting bail. They just bail mm -hmm. to an opposition person who was on trial for four months without any post, post when progress be made on the matter, and you still think he should keep that person in detention. Mm -hmm. When he's so get him on bail, the next day he's sent on indefinite leave. You know, as These you are the things we are saying. As you and say that, wrong. Rashid, and for the longest of, of time, I think when we talk about democracy and the rights of citizens, we've, all, we, we've almost all of the times, I mean, we've paid attention to the political and, um, rights. But can we for a second, I mean, Rev, let me bring you, because um, um, Lawrence mentioned that um, some, of the f some of the factors responsible for the August um, 10 carnage, I mean, are present with us. I mean, le le let's go back to the socioeconomic factors in Sierra Leone. Though our 1991 constitution is saying these are non-justiciable, you cannot... Oh, <laughs> I mean, but, 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 but um, I mean, I mentioned that because Rashid just talked about it. I mean, that it, it, it took the court of South Africa to give those rights to the citizens of South Africa. Because fundamentally, you taking up leadership, it means you are going to be able to look after the welfare of the people who believe in you. So how do we factor that into the conversation of democracy? So, so it's, it's very interesting, and um, we must not neglect that aspect of um, the governance of the state. Mm. Um, human rights lawyers will tell you when it comes to ECOSOC rights, we call mm -hmm. them second generation right. rights. Mm -hmm. But of course, they're not supposed to be second generation rights. Right. In fact, and that is where we start. Our emphasis is on civil and political mm -hmm. rights. And um, if you go to chapter three of our constitution, they are all outlined there. Mm -hmm. But in chapter two, where we are talking about the state's objectives when it comes to the economic objective, political, social, educational, when you get now to section 14, which is still under chapter two of our constitution, it will yeah. tell you, you cannot take anybody to court for that. Mm -hmm. But um, we must not forget that Sierra Leone is a signatory to um, these um, charters, whether it's continentally or conventions internationally through the UN. Mm. We take, for instance, the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. And even the, the, the protocol to that particular right, especially the rights for women, mm -hmm. all of these rights are given. In fact, when you send a report from the country to the African Commission, the, the rating for the economic and social rights, they are far greater than the rating for the civil and political rights. To tell you mm -hmm. that even continentally, they want us to treat this issue seriously. Mm. And when we look at ECOSOC rights, we are talking about the dividends of democracy. Mm. If they are not available, 
In fact, for some people, democracy becomes a waste of time mm. because uh, uh, um, there is an aspect of governance that we need to emphasize, service delivery. Mm. And every well-meaning Sierra Leonean should focus attention on that. And we must stop giving excuses. Mm. Because in the context of the social contract, some of the reasons why I will now come, say, during elections, I will vote for this person, it is because as I transfer my power to be governed, it is predicated on the fact that at the end of the day, this basic amenity should be settled. Mm -hmm. And if we are, here we are in the 21st century, 61 years after independence, we are still struggling with these things. I think the electorate, the people of this country, mm. we must reflect on what is going on in our country and emphatically ask our politicians to give account. Mm. We must put aside the, 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 the tribal regional influence in politics <laughs> and we vote this particular group because they belong to our region or because they, they are tribesmen. Reverend, I, we I, must demand I'm, I'm what curious. will ensure opportunities are available for every Sierra Leonean. I'm curious to ask the question, I mean, how the electorates should demand accountability in the sense that you know, the Institute for Governance Reform, IGO, um, released a report that talked about govern, government framing national policies as um, tit for tat, coming to revenge. And you have the opposition using the very people, their support base, as shield to escape accountability. So, so with, with, <clears throat> with these games being played by the very politicians, how so, do we... So, so either way... Mm -hmm. Whether it's from one group or the other, yeah. the people are victims. Exactly. And therefore, the people mm. must demand from the politicians that they mm. stop playing such games. And when we begin to show that by our voting patterns, mm -hmm. it will definitely draw the attention of politicians to say, mm, the people are no longer thinking the way they used to think. Mm. Because... Some people will tell you when they belong to certain, a certain political party and they, they are in a particular um, community, they will tell you even if it's the worst person that is put here as a candidate, mm -hmm. that candidate is going to win. And, uh, you know, you, you complain about, about things that are not available. Mm -hmm. But have you taken time to even check the quality of representation that you have? When you decided that you were going to vote and see what is happening now, the challenges that people are facing to register, because that is where, in fact, you lose it or you, you win it. Mm -hmm. see, the, see what challenges people are facing. But people will still, when the time comes, they will still waste that vote. Because you're going to, you're going to elect somebody who does not care whether, in fact, you have a, 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 a portable drinking water in your community. And you, you still fight for that politician. You still leave whatever business you are doing profitable to go to the streets in the name of um, public rallies. During the last election, we went to the media to tell people, don't allow your politicians to disrespect you this much, to ask you to go to the street. Mm -hmm. Come to my house and tell me your agenda for my community and my nation. Then I know you've started treating me with respect. But if you are now asking me to leave whatever I am doing for uh, um, a T-shirt, 10,000 leons, Pega Park, and these other things, I should dance behind you uh, um, in the streets of Freetown or in whatever community in Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. then that is the biggest joke in our democracy. We must begin to think and ask our uh, politicians to be accountable to us. For the it does not matter who that politician is. For the longest of time... I think we've, um, we've employed this particular strategy. Um, not can make let them fool you again. Every, almost, almost, I mean, the, the, these and have the people been the are still slogans. Being fooled. Exactly, and they continue to do that. So what more can be done? Because, for example, if, you're, if our constitution is saying, hey, you, you cannot take this government to court if the government does not provide you, I mean, water, food, and this, that. But you go back to, you, we're saying, oh, these are second generation rights, the ECOSOC rights. But take, take a look at, let, let's put it this way. If 
the government cannot provide me job. I starve to death. And, and Technically, the right to life. That's, that, is, that is even a breach of the social contract. Mm. Because when I give you my power to govern me, right. it is on the basis that I'm going to get those basic amenities in return. Mm. Above food and shelter, security, should not be a challenge in this day of our, God, of our Lord. Mm. 21st century when all the nations are, they, they, in fact, they, 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 they providing for, for, for the terrestrial. They've gone beyond that. They are now moving into space and looking at how to explore uh, 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 the universe. Mm -hmm. And we are still battling with the basics of life. And our politicians, they go to bed comfortably. We must put them on their toes and let them know that we are serious and we are demanding what is our right. Mm -hmm. The attitude of the average Sierra Leonean is the problem. There is this expression, how for do. Mm. There is something to be done. If somebody comes to me and is asking me for political power and is making promises with the manifesto of that political party, we must hold them responsible. Mm. And you know, the, the thing that bothers me is that everybody who does one thing or the other to protect the status quo is also suffering. But we cannot come up and courageously say, you know what, what? let mm. us discuss this issue. Let's bring the issues to the table. Mm. It's not about being a brother or being a sister. It is about what will ensure that I, I, I live a dignified life. Mm. And it takes me to uh, 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 um, the aspect of what we call human security in the context of our democracy. Mm. When we talk about human security, it is number one. The, the absence of fear, which is peace. Number two, the absence of want, which is development. Mm. Number three, the absence of indignities, which is um, fundamental human rights. If those three things are challenging in the context of democracy, we need to have a rethink. Mm. And the UN Secretary General, going back to his statement. Yes. He said, um, democracy, development, and human rights are mutually reinforcing. So you cannot talk about democracy without development. And you cannot talk about democracy without human rights. Right. They are all mutually reinforcing. And he, he, he recommended something. Which is? That we must imbibe the culture of inclusion, equality, and solidarity. Mm -hmm. All of us must work together. And we must not work paying lip service to the things that are happening. Mm. Everybody with the difficulties that we have in our country, those who voted against SLPP are suffering, those who voted for SLPP are suffering. So we must face up squarely with the situation mm. and talk to our leaders, talk to our politicians, mm. that it is time for them to uh, uh, and face us with the solutions to the challenges that we are faced with. Lawrence. It, 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 it's politics our problem in Sierra Leone. When you say, when you the way we practice politics, the way our politicians, I mean, play the game and make us believe that everything must be done around political lines. So say, for example, we're talking about how, I mean, trust is eroding in our democratic institutions because Whoever is, appo is appointed today to serve in, in an institution feels obligated to serve whoever appoints um, that individual in that position. So already, instead of competence, you are appointed based on compensation, based on um, your loyalty to the party. It's, so in, in that context, is politics a problem? Politics has always been a problem. I will refer you to a book I was talking about um, to Reverend mm. when I came in. It's titled Bound to Cooperate, Conflict, People and Peace in Sierra Leone. It's a unique project after the war that actually culminated to the collection of papers um, that formed that book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, one of the authors wrote, and I quote, I quote, um, he said, when asked what their country's most fundamental problem is Salonians and the majority of Africans answer corruption. 
uh, well, uh, the answer politics. Politics. And when asked what the problem with politics and the politicians is, they responded corruption. Um, Nelson Mandela once said that um, in, even if you take 50 years in office, mm -hmm. it's a very short time. You see that as a privilege and an opportunity to serve and serve well. Pierlo Numumba, whom I admire so much, contemplated that in the African context, politics is seen as a vehicle to enrich yourself. Mm -hmm. And the electorate, the politicians presume that the electorate don't think. And if that is so, and in our case, partly true, it creates room for rogue politicians to grab power, abuse power, corrupt power, and leave us with nothing. Now, we must understand a few things. Mm. Before this time, during the APC regime, particularly the second term of Anes Baikoma, mm. we had a very vibrant media. We had a vibrant CSO, civil society. Mm -hmm. We had a vibrant bar association. These three institutions, the media, the civil society, and that of the bar association, collectively <coughs> demanded strong accountability from the previous regime. Even though they were recalcitrant to, I mean, deal with issues or address issues of transparency and accountability, I mean, correctly. Mm -hmm. But we did our best. So, to a larger extent, we held democracy. We upheld democracy. Even though the Constitutional Court, the Supreme Court, in our case, mm -hmm. provoked what could have become a crisis in this country by affirming the decision of the former president to relieve his former vice president. Yet, the Bar Association stood up. Civil society stood up. The media stood up. Now, in the last four years, Sandra, Because I was just going to ask you, what's the current situation with those in three the last four years, sectors? Mm. A large section of the media has failed in its moral and constitutional obligation. Mm. to hold this government accountable. And the government is spreading itself. In fact, what it has done, no, it, is it so has given... The, the government a, has expunged this. The, so the, what the is the problem then? The how, how do we then, I mean, as media practitioners or as a media industry, for example, how have we allowed ourselves to go down this path you're talking about? I can only speak for myself. Go ahead. But by observation, mm -hmm. Samuel, a large section of the media has failed. Mm. And it is that space, the likes of Adebayo, that gaps, the likes of Adebayo capitalized. I'm telling you the fact. This is something I have thought out. If we were vibrant as we used to be, Adebayo would not have a space in this current, I mean, in the dynamics of things. If, even, even as you talk about the dynamics, I mean, the, 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 um, the upsurge of, of the social media and all of that. Even with the, with the, with, with the I mean, proliferation of social networks, social media, what have you. Some people need people to speak up for them. And because we are not doing that job and doing it effectively, that is why people now turn they out they now turn attention to those people mm. because pe whatever you say things are not right in this country and there's one thing any government even some of the reports i've read mm -hmm. whether it's the global peace index whether it's the democracy index look at the the audit reports and what have you the economy of this country is sick 
And that is where, why everybody is now concerned because we are all affected. And look at the, the, the revelations by the Africanist press. Even if, let's, let's say, let's, let's just say, okay, these are not corruption, right? Mm -hmm. These are not corruption revelations. They, they're not getting nothing for those corruption. But for the, at the very least, those reports highlight frivolous spending by the government. You don't spend taxpayers' money like drunken sailors. That is one big problem. If you say money no day, show it, show it to the people that money no day. Cut down on government expense. Look at the manifesto. See how much they, I mean, describe the, 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 the adjectives they used to describe the former government on frivolous spending. Now you have come. What are you doing? And that is why one of the reasons that triggered the Augustine protest. Look at Sri Lanka, for example. When the economy turns bad, when the economy goes bad, everybody becomes concerned because it affects our livelihoods. It affects our daily activities. And even if GDP is to grow from 17 to 100 percent, if you do not reduce poverty, unemployment, inequality, these three central problems are not reduced. From higher levels to lower levels, our democracy will always be in peril. That is why Reverend said at the very start that our democracy is fragile. And this is not his own thoughts per se. I have read reports, the fragility reports. It's, yeah, our democracy is still fragile. So, so, so with all of these challenges you've highlighted, now if we are to surmount them with um, government actions, with government decisions, do we just limit these things to government? What is happening with institutions set up to handle, to help in salvaging the plight we're currently in as a nation? Or should we wait, say, oh wait, these are government institutions, um, for example, the president has a power to appoint, so wh whether they perform or not, it goes back to the presidency. Now we are in a moral crisis. I will refer to it as a situation where we are experiencing an integrity deficiency syndrome. Across, and it across the cuts board. across the board from mm. the state house, the office of the president. Because if the audit auditor general's office could found out that could find out that the office of the president falsified retirement details of overseas trips and expenditures, that provokes a moral crisis that there is an integrity deficit in that office. And we need to check it. So it cuts across. Mm -hmm. And the next thing we see was the suspension of the Auditor General. Mm -hmm. When the likes of Honorable Tawa, um, Honorable Givao, stood up in parliament, they stood up against the status quo or the sine qua non of that institution, they highlighted issues of corruption. They were somehow cowed into submission. They were, they, 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 the system went against them. And sadly enough, Samuel, very sadly. Is this, is, can this be attributed I'm to coming, quiet, please? Let me just, Go ahead. Very sadly, hmm. the people of this country did not stand shoulder to shoulder with those guys. That's, that, that begs the question. Is this a societal malaise? Is this, is this that society has accepted these things? Because us who, who, who form um, society, we, we, these are the things we celebrate. These are the things we dance about. These are the things we clap for. So how then do we, do we, Reverend, Reverend talks about culture. it is time we demand accountability. The political culture, So, so how do we change that? How do we change that? Yes, it's the when people. we are able to establish the fact that mm. state institutions should be function as they should. The, uh, Pelo, Pelo Lumumba spoke about that uh, the, the, the state house or the parliament should mm. not be transformed. It should be regarded as a holy place and should not be transformed into a den of thieves. Mm. So we must reflect on some of those statements coming from learned professor like that man. Yeah? As to whether our own, in our own case, whether the state house and the parliament has already been transformed into a den of thieves. Let us reflect on those statements. See where we are. When we have institutions like the NEC, 
let the neck function as it should. The constitution is a very big problem. That one was highlighted in the TRC report. Even the Lombe Peace Ac Ac Accord of 7 July 1999 requires or, or talks about the constitution. I mean, yes, there has been consultations. This government, the last former government rejected recommendations. This government accepted some or rather most so, of the so, recommendations. Uh, 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 but particularly, Sam, I'm coming. If we want to start, let's start with parliament. If you still retain section 77K of the constitution, eh, the likes of Tawa will not be able to speak freely again in parliament. I'm just giving an example. Yeah? If you still retain such sections and you claim that you want to practice full democracy, do you, our democracy do you is feel, a bad regime. Do you feel the parliament itself would want that particular section to be changed? I'm asking the question because let's go back. Um, the um, Center for Accountability and Rule of Law, IGL, they published, I mean, a, a, a report, and were an some opinion pool, that the people of Sierra Leone said this house is the second most corrupt, corrupt institution, institution in the country. I mean, a house that, um, that if it does what it should do, accountability should not be a problem. There should not be even, uh, I mean, space for the auditors of the Anti-Corruption Commission. Because that house, I mean, oversees every um, executive um, action when they, do their, when they perform their oversight function. But if that house did not accept that and the house said, wait a minute, you know what? Let's call these guys. Let them come and show us who told them that we are the second most corrupt institution. So parliament in itself, if we, if we, go, if we go by that report, is very corrupt. So every institution... Sadly to say, according to many reports, it's corrupt. How do we build trust? How do we build confidence? You just talked about the media, the, 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 the civil society space, the, the, the selling bar situation. Many have said these three sectors, um, all of a sudden, they need miracle to speak up. They've all gone dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how do we... How then do we go and ask for redemption? I mean, if, I to, if I'm to put it that way. So at the end of the day, we can all play our role to make Sierra Leone great. So first, we can do so we can achieve that through institutional reforms, for example. Mm. We can also look at some legal reforms that needed to, to take place, mm. right? That should take place, in fact. Again, we can also promote civic education mm. so that we become aware of our rights and responsibilities and how we too can contribute positively and immensely to the development of this country. Again, we need political conscientization. The way we perceive we'll do that. politics. We'll do that. The media, for example, can, can start. The CSOs, the civil society can partner. The media, the, civil society the, can these partner. Are, these, are groups, these, are the these are groups that have been accused of being political in the first place. Of course, Samuel, I stated in Tahalia so that how do, so the where does, where does of the, the media has failed. Where does the trust come but from? There is, there, I mean, we still have time to do to change things. To go back. To turn things around, Samuel. L um, lawyer Rashid, let me bring you in. I mean, the conversation is getting interesting. Yes. Democracy appears to be... I don't know, earlier um, when uh, um, Lawrence was making his precursory remark, he was citing a report that talked about democracy fitting the context of Africa. Um, really, is democracy the form of government that Sierra Leone should take? If at all, I mean, Sierra Leone should be developed and Sierra Leone should look after the people of Sierra Leone. Yes, I'm going to answer your question, um, um, Samuel. Let me just still Go a ahead, few minutes right. for my colleagues. I, I enjoyed the discussion and the questions you were asking them. Um, first, let me take it from Melvin, right? Lawrence. Lawrence, Lawrence. Lawrence. Yes, yeah, so um, when Lawrence was making the categorizations, um, I'm happy he, 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 he was not um, holistic in terms of um, saying um, <laughs> all, yes. So, you know, and yes, because you know why? Because I still believe there, there, are, always good ones. there are remnants who are, are, who are holding ones. the fort. <laughs> and, and it's not been, been boastful. These are some of the things that perhaps motivate me. Because somebody asked myself, what will history write about us? That we, we are in those... You see, when you look at the TRC report, mm -hmm. so I'm, I read the section about the TRC report that indicted what? lawyers and, and the legal system and the profession. Mm -hmm. And when I came to that point, I was, I was almost weeping. We say the lawyers at the time 
failed the system, mm -hmm. to rise up to a regime that was dictatorial and to hold that regime to account. Mm -hmm. So I, asked, I told myself that this report, if it's going to happen again, mm -hmm. let Rashid, one, for once, let Rashid be exempted. That mm -hmm. is my personal conviction, mm -hmm. that I spoke and I stood up for the people of Sierra Leone in times of difficulty. So Legal Link has been exempt. I mean, we are not boastful, but in all what he has said, the Tawa issue, we made statement, we stood with Tawa. We were the only group that said Tawa must be crowned a hero. We came here and we, we saluted his courage I, I, in the midst of that I, I, tumultuous situation. I, I, I love I love the yes. events. I would have jumped to that too. Yes, let's yes. So now, now let's 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 go to let's go to to what um you ask um Reverend mm -hmm. about social economy and cultural rights. So I'm still with the judiciary. Right. Because this this is my baby. This is where I I want to see the change springing up from. Because mm -hmm. I know the effect we have. Kenya yeah. today is stable because the judiciary has spoken mm -hmm. and nobody can dare to, 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 to say otherwise. Mm -hmm. And the country is moving on. Right. South Africa also the same. So it's the judiciary. The, I, I told you earlier that the parliament, mm -hmm. the uh, executive, they may not do their own thing. But when they come to the judiciary, the judiciary must say, hey guys, behave yourself. Mm -hmm. This is unacceptable because we are the disciplinarian. We will interpret and punish lawbreakers. So the judiciary must be sound and effective. Now on the issue of social economy and cultural rights. Right. Sierra Leone is, well, we're hearing about 8 million now. Mm. But look at the vast resources that we have in our country. Over 15 viable resources. I studied in Mauritius when I was doing my first master's in law. Mauritius has only two viable resources. They have the beach and they have sugarcane. It's almost free, everything there, mm -hmm. you know? And you start asking ourselves, Sierra Leone has 15 viable sources. We have, we have even discovered oil in our country. Right. Apart from the gold, diamond, bauxite, wood tile, you name them. We cannot ensure at this stage affordable housing for our people. We cannot ensure uninterrupted light system in our, in our country. We cannot ensure clean, clean, pure water for our people. Many of us are still drinking. So I speak to you, Samuel. This is something again which we should talk about. Many people are buying water. In fact, it has become the norm. Right. Packet water is what we are all surviving mm -hmm. in. We don't even want to ask questions anymore about our natural yeah. water. All right. So these are the things I'm talking about. Now, how does this court can come in to have, even though there is a bar on enforceability of social and cultural rights, mm -hmm. the Supreme Court of India has set an example. They have a similar question like us. There's also a bar on guaranteeing. But see how the see the beauty of how the judges go around the issue. For example, they will still pass judgment mm -hmm. in in addressing civil and political rights. They can still pass judgment that has effect on social and cultural rights. For example, I'll give you an example. A go the government neglect on rolling out effective free health care to pregnant women. That would be a a case for violation of the right to life. Mm -hmm. Which is guaranteed under Article of the Constitution. So when they bring that kind of case, the court will now say the failure of the government in rolling out an effective free health care program constitutes a violation of the rights to life of pregnant women. So you see, they use civil rights that are like justiciable, but yet it has effect on right. There's a way to go around up. It's about a mindset of the judicial system that even though we have this, this blockade, we can still, in a way, go around round about it and then ensure these rights as well. For example, also... Quickly, I know you yes. want to go. Do you mm -hmm. think it's deliberate? Bec I'm asking the question because this, it's monumental. Mm. This, this has been a monumental mm. crisis mm. with us. Mm. Um, since, mm. after, since independence, mm. this has been monumental. In the sense that we've always had governments, leaders, who feel that if that is guaranteed, mm. if all citizens are given the right to hold them accountable for socio-economic rights, it will be their end. Do you think it's then deliberate actually using that, even those who they, who they feel can play around the laws, which, like you said, mm. would have helped us, I mean, to, to, to have handled that situation and let us, at least we would have been better off. Yeah, so, so, so that, that was the thinking mm -hmm. and the case that the government of Africa made mm. when an old man called Mazibuko brought a case to the Constitutional Court on the right to water. Mm. Her community was being deprived water. The government made a case. What? 
if we ensure this kind of thing, we have to say what are all kind of case. Mm -hmm. Same thing on regard to health. That if they guarantee this, it will cost money to cause this. So the question has got to use wisdom mm. and ask for an independent expert to do an assessment on what it will cost the government to hold out an ARV drugs to all pregnant women with HIV AIDS at the times in Africa. Mm -hmm. The government says the budget will collapse. Everything will end. There will be no money for other things. When the independent expert determine the amount of people that are affected versus the cost for the drug in rolling it out free, it will only cost the government 2% of the budget. Mm -hmm. Government lie all the time. <laughs> the executive <laughs> is good at that. The, 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 the judiciary should expose that. Right. So, for example now, we thought heaven would fall when Anas Baikoma, former president, rolled out the free health care. Mm -hmm. We thought heaven would fall or the, the world would end when this current president, President Bio, rolled out the free education, mm -hmm. at least for primary and, yeah. and, you know. So it tells you that, the, did we, did, we, did we die? Did the world end? No. So we are just escalating and exaggerating, but these rights can be ensured if only there's a will. And there is also that consciousness about the efficacy of these rights. To me, they are existential. If, if, the, 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 if we are unwell, Samuel, you will not be here right. to do this wonderful program. So the, the right to health is key to the right to life. It has, it has a, a connection to the right to life. You, because you, so you, you just mentioned Rashid, if yes. there is the will, yes. it can be done. Yes. So how do we then get the Austin civil unions who give the power to these guys? Yes. When they come to us, let us demand that. How do we demand? How do we tell them that this is something you can do? Don't come and lie to us mm. because evidently that's what they've been doing. Mm -hmm. Telling people that they're going to do X, Y, and Z and they've never done that. Yeah. So how can the people yeah. do so, that? So the fallback is, mm -hmm. Samuel, so the, 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 the executive will promise a lot. Right. But when they are in the, the throne, they now face the realities. So how do we compel them? So that's why the judiciary is key in this. Because it's a right issue. Mm -hmm. For example now, Samuel, what will it cost our government to ensure affordable housing? for its population. Remember, we have stone in our country. We have space. We have land. We have sand. All right? We have the manpower. The military is idle at the moment. They can be co-opted to build a thousand houses in every district. In six months, they can achieve that. We have clay. We can use clay bricks. So I'm talking about something that is reality. We have even NASA that can invest the money. There's an idle money and NASA is wasting there. They can invest that money to these local houses that can benefit people. So we're not talking about something that is a sky rocketing. No, it's a reality. So you see what I'm saying? So now how do we now compel them to say, this is workable? Mm -hmm. The court must now make a decision to say that this cannot be tolerated in democratic society. You have to do something about it. And the court make a decision about affordable housing. So this, the, there's a way the court can push the government. How do, we, how do we push the court to do that when the court is being accused of being in bed already? Oh, I, I agree with you. That's a gap as well. Because I also noted in my jurisdiction mm -hmm. that we have a weak civil society space. Mm. We don't take cases to courts. We just come to the media and blast and say things. Few, <laughs> few have the temerity right. to take to the court. Mm -hmm. And when the, the judiciary will say, well, it's not before us. Right. So we have to also be very mindful that we don't just criticize or we don't just blast, but we take public interest cases to the court and test the jurisprudence. You know, we might have a backlash all the time, but one day at a time, one at a time, we might be lucky. Today we have a jurisprudence that um, says, vehicular ban on pulling day is right. acceptable and illegal. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Sohi Senyabanga, a human rights yes. lawyer, yes. had to try the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. and then we, see, we saw what happened. So we can, we can keep at it. Today, in Kenya, in South Africa, in Rwanda, in, in Ghana, the civil society is really doing effective work in making sure that any attempt by the government to stifle rights, they move to the court to bring in the court. But again, like I said, it will take a progressive judiciary to also understand that they don't need to block people and, and throw the matter out because of the issue of low cost standard. <laughs> so most often, this is the jurisprudence That's we have. Right. The courage to, to hear the case on its merits mm -hmm. and decide on the facts as alleged is not really the mantra in our judiciary. So mm -hmm. I, as a judicial person, I am not happy with the state of my judiciary. And yes, we have made some improvements on access to justice, mm -hmm. which is key. 
but on the administration of justice. That is where we are faulting. And then I think we can do better by allowing the system to operate. Judges are protected and their independence is guaranteed. When they sit on matter, no influence at all. But again, it's difficult in our society because of how we structure even their appointments. Mm. Remember, it's largely the prerogative of the president. So the other day I was asking the question, why can't we learn from experiences that will help? Kenya experience, the South African experience, how they choose their judges. Okay, on a merit-based approach, there is a call for application. So the president is put last w w w in the w entire ballgame. Would that uh, be ball a game. violation of our 1991 constitution? Yeah, so, so, <laughs> I agree. so it, it comes back to all how we review. Mm. That's why it's a missed opportunity again. Right. The former government missed the opportunity. Two things the former government did that was appalling. The the um, removal of the vice president and the, the missed opportunity to review our constitution. Mm. That can never go unnoticed. This government, again, is m missing that opportunity. You know, so let's fix this once and for all. If we have a gun norm that is all inclusive and speaks to the issues, like you're rightly mentioning now, because there is the provision on the constitution that says the president appoints the judges. Mm -hmm. So how do we go around that? So making sure that we, we insulate this institution in such a way that they become more emboldened to deliver justice without fear or favor. That is the challenge. Mm -hmm. And I believe one day at a time, we should be open to speak about this issue, Samuel, mm -hmm. without polit politics in, in mind, mm. because I believe all of the, all the governments, APC right. and SLP, have failed us in that regard. Right. Now the judiciary is in a transition, so to speak. We can do better. The current uh, 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 justice is making some reforms, which is uh, noticeable and which is applauded, but we have to go to the point of administration of justice. Mm. When they come before us, how we treat the people, how we deal with the issue of bail. Mm -hmm. Today, everybody knows when they charge you, you are going to be, to be sent down. Right. Even for misdemeanor offenses, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a travesty. You can't, I mean, guy will trust conduct, you, you send someone down for Panama Road. So we, we are, in a way, causing our own menace. We are feeling the, the, the question center unnecessarily, mm -hmm. being a burden up, upon the nation as well. It's all about saying, okay, we'll treat the person, we'll refuse bail. So how do we now come back? Now you see, at the end of the day, the case is even abandoned. But yet the person has been sent to Panemba Road, his rights have been infringed upon, and there is no courage, I'll argue again, on the part of the legal you know, um, advocates representing the person to even bring an action for compensation, compensation. under That's, our constitution. So we are all going around in circles and not doing the things that we ought to do. So lawyers are also indicted. As I sit, sit, sit here, there are many things we have not. So the other day, I was even laughing at my colleagues. There's a law that has been passed. Now, Samuel, give me one minute, let me explain Why? this irony. This is, this, is, this is crazy. My colleagues are currently grumbling. Almost all lawyers in the bar, as they, they are grumbling now over one law that has been passed. So I was sitting there, I was asking myself, so you did not see what happened? You did not? So nobody cared when they carried the law. Now the law has affected us. Now, they are going slowly to making sure that we don't even do conveyance anymore. Conveyances are done by the Ministry of Land. Every lawyer now is shouting. I said, okay, this is good. I kept quiet. Because you know why? It's not about our interest alone. We fail the people of Sierra Leone and, and we are keeping quiet. All the time, Rashid, Rashid, Rashid. They let me laugh at me. That I, I, I let me go and I'm idle. Yes, now it is, it is our turn. It has bites us. And now they were grumbling. No, that law will, will continue to be like that. And we'll stand that it be like that. Because we are the ones who have been keeping quiet. <laughs> and today, we are, we are going to have money. I think for us. Conveyance yeah. and all of these things. <laughs> yes, the law has been passed. Nobody <laughs> saw it. And now the law is there. It's now law. Now we are all grumbling to say, we must have a decision to go and be the minister. That this is all done. It's, a, it's, it's, it's where we are getting money. We should not do that. This is nonsense. Thank you. Lawyers must right. always speak up when we see things going wrong. That's why we are called to the bar to All speak right. for the people of Sierra Leone. Yes, quickly, I need to bring it up. Um, besides taking, I mean, the taking action, I mean, on socioeconomic rights to the court for mm -hmm. determination. Um, another way we could achieve that mm -hmm. is to have a national framework. So, for example, um, China, I guess it was before COVID nineteen. Uh, the Communist Party convened a conference where they projected the future of China for the next 100 years. So the framework has been developed. Whosoever succeeds... Like the a national uh, agenda. Yeah, a national agenda. Z uh, Xi Jinping, Xi Jinping. Mm -hmm. 
will go by that framework. In the next 10 years, this is what we want to achieve. And next 20 years, this is what mm -hmm. we want to, to achieve. We have, there's a starting point already. We have the medium-term national development plan, mm -hmm. which is designed for 2023, to in 2019 to 2023, which is always we, political because you look at the yeah because it was like initiated by this exactly. government. Which is always so political. what we could do, for example, is to look at that 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 document holistically, reach out to communities and what have you. Have elicit their inputs. Mm -hmm. I mean, get experts to examine, analyze the document, bring. I mean, sensible inputs into that document. Let it be a national framework. We legislate it. Yeah. So, for example, the free education, it should not be a policy, a manifesto policy of the, this government. If it is legislated, it becomes a national policy. So, regardless of whichever government is in power, mm -hmm. we are guaranteed and assured of free education. Mm. The same applies to health, to housing. In Nigeria, uh, one of, I've forgotten the state, uh, uh, um, a governor built low-cost housing for his people. I know you have seen that, that, yeah. that, that, mm -hmm. that, that video. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, 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 he uh, 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 um, about 1,000 or over 1,000 mm -hmm. low-cost housing. And the people were so happy. If a governor <coughs> could achieve that, how much for a state, a whole state, I mean, to build just 1,000 in every district as he just pointed out. So there are things we could do. We could start somewhere. You know, small, 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 we'll get it. But is that the thing is, we lack vision. Mm. Yeah? And the politics of interest is about what I could pocket now, save from my generation. Mm. I know some man the way they talk say if, if me party come on apart now, safe. In order for put in that beginning, another for put in that. And that's true. Mm -hmm. There are people in the former regime, even when they don't have job now, they're not poor. They still they live happily, healthily. They enjoy bad, bad one. So we need to make provision for future generations. Well, now we are faced with this problem of climate change phenomenon. Mm. Yeah? Okay. See how Sierra Leone is badly affected. Mm -hmm. And we are still cutting down trees. We are still deforesting large I mean, uh, 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 portions of lands. Let, yeah? let, let, me, effect, you know, let me quickly run through... Uh, um, uh, uh, um, messages, then we'll come back to, to the conversation. Ambassador Idris uh, Sama is saying, some citizens must call on the attention of our politicians towards accountability and the rule of law. Abu Bakr Rashid is saying, Mr. Mr. Rashid, they said that having resources um, does not make a nation wealthy, but converting those resources to create wealth. So unless we create wealth with those resources that can move this nation towards um, development. Fode Mustafa Toure is saying, the governance um, infrastructure has to be dismantled because the current package of democracy as received doesn't work. Any country in the West with different ethnic groups have a democracy that suits the demographics. I will give two examples, Belgium and Switzerland, where there are um, three spoken languages in the two countries, and the power is very much in the language um, regions, meaning people don't care who the president is. The government is formed on equal population representation, so no one cares. All institutions will work <laughs> if people are not uh, made so powerful. All right. Um, Daniel Kramer is saying these politicians would never take us, the people of Sierra Leone, serious because we have always been allowing them to use us whenever they need us and dump um, us as they please until um, after every five years. So my advice to my Sierra Leoneans is that let us stop supporting these politicians um, based on the on tribe sentiments, political parties, affiliations, and regional lines. Let us begin to make them feel like we are no more fools and we cannot be used like tools anymore. Until and unless we stand up and begin to ask for a better life, they can never treat us um, with seriousness. Right? Um, Eabori is saying key actors like the, judici like the judiciary, media, the forces, and the religious leaders have all failed to speak for the masses. Um, Molai Warboy by Kamara is saying, Reverend Jubila, the people would always vote the way they are voted because that's the way the politicians have designed the minds of the people by deliberately keeping them in poverty and hunger just like our colonial uh, masters did years ago to get hold of our lives. Minds and thinking and until our people, um, livelihoods, is liberated, um, their thinking will always be the same. Um, most better, okay. 
Um, Abdul Siddiqui Razak Conte is saying, Sierra Leone is a country where our judges are controlled by high authorities, others from above. The arms of government need to be independent but, um, bodies, where no one should have control over the other. Osam Conte is saying the most tyrant government ever in Sierra Leone is, okay, that's not what we're discussing here, Osam. Um, we're discussing democracy. Talk about democracy. Yeah, my area at Central Africa voted for the same absent politician over and over until his death, presumably because he ran under a particular party. Very sad. Michael Kuka is saying, George Owell. James, James St. Patrick is saying, universities are busy nurturing hungry students who already have fixed mentality of how lawyers make money in Sierra Leone. The evil of justice in Sierra Leone keeps polluting as they graduate from law school with such aim. Interesting. So many messages. At most, I'm going to take five more. Guys, you would have to forgive me. I can't take all of your messages um, this evening or in this show. Lloyd Banks is saying, it's only in Sierra Leone I can see judges grant bail and the bail conditions will never be approved until five years. Um, LEJ and Kamarimba are in prison for an offense. Do we, uh, do we know how long are they going to stand trial? Okay, that's from Lloyd. Eddie Grant is saying, when we are in a democratic lecture room this evening. I'm loving it. All right. Um, the pot calling the kettle black. Sometimes it's the very people who pollute the stream that complain about the quality of the water. I thought till we seen that. Bashir Loksin, Mustafa Falawa is saying, voter ignorance, relying on ordinary citizens to choose leaders and make judgments amongst them based on policy performance condemns democracies to leadership and policy choices that reflect chronic voter ignorance and irrationality. Certainly, these are all the serious issues in Sierra Leone. I, um, successive Sierra Leone administrations have proven woefully unable to focus sustained attention on a raft of major long-term challenges, whether it is infrastructure decay, the role of entitlement spending in the government budget, or climate change, and unwilling to craft reforms that inflict short-term pain for the sake of long-term gain. Still, our people are suffering. Oh, Salon. All right, Lucky Bash is saying that... Um, Boss Elia Duazaki is saying, one of the reasons why our country is not enjoying democracy is that um, we, the citizens of this country, do not know the meaning of the word democracy. Because if we do, um, these two political parties would not use us as tools against each other, all in the name of politics. Um, the final message I will take is from Ambassador Mike Joseph Kanu. He's saying, if citizens cannot rely, um, reliably hold their rulers accountable for the actions that they take in public realm, traditional sovereigns, uh, benevolent despots, or elected autocrats might uh, momentarily tolerate any or all of the above. But if they cannot be held accountable, they can dismiss these political concessions as irrelevant or retract um, them at will. Guys, I have so many messages. Unfortunately, time would never permit me to go through um, all of them. So I apologize for the ones that I did not read. Please forgive me, but we do appreciate and enjoy the privilege of your time here on the show. Um, Reverend, let me allow you to um, respond to some of the messages um, that, I've, that I've gone through on Facebook. <clears throat> um, let me, let, me, let me say a big thank you to um, those who have sent in messages. Um, they're all very, very interesting. But um, there is one in particular that I think is helpful to our national conversation. Right. And uh, somebody gave the example of um, countries where you have two or three uh, um, languages and how they share or distribute power. And that is something that I think um, is lacking in our country which I call the national character principle. Mm. We've not injected that into our governance. So APC comes to power, the leaning is in the Northwest. Right. SLPP is in power, the leaning is in the Southeast. We need to move beyond that particular point. And um, it goes to the aspect of um, what um, Lawrence just said about legislating a national development plan. Mm -hmm. And in that, in that legislation, we must also look at how power is distributed so that whoever comes to power, whether it's APC, SLP, or any other political party, mm -hmm. there is a framework that, 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 that gives him directives that regarding to the aspirations of yes, how we should even appoint 
members into the cabinet to govern the country. Mm. The country, it's a, it's a country, it's not one region or one tribe. Mm. It has to reflect the, the demographics of our nation. So for instance, we say, if, if you are choosing uh, um, cabinet members, five should come from this region, five from that region. We, 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 we design what should um, inform that decision, mm -hmm. but it, it, it now becomes a law. What that will do is to prevent people from fighting to gain access to state house mm -hmm. or to represent us. Because we know that uh, by that arrangement, every region is going to be represented and everybody feels that it's part of what is happening. Mm. I go back to what the, the, the UN Secretary General uh, recommended, the issue of inclusion, equality, and solidarity. Mm -hmm. When you do that, you get that thing happening. And you begin to see people stop sabotaging whichever government is in power. Because what, what has happened over time in our country, mm -hmm. when APC is in power, SFPP does everything to ensure they do not succeed. Mm -hmm. Now that SFPP is in power, it's the same thing. It's a vicious circle that um, we, we, we must be, make bold to break free from. Mm. And it comes with courage of conviction. The people must be determined. You see, it, it, Take American politics, we go back to that as, as the, the best practice that we have to reference. Mm -hmm. When Donald Trump started doing things that were, that were considered undemocratic, it was not even a democratic party that was, that was the strong opposition to tell Donald Trump this is not acceptable. It was the very Republican party that would say to Donald Trump, no, it's not accepted. Mm -hmm. In fact, an interesting thing happened. By how the American Constitution is framed, the vice president becomes very important in who continues as leader with that electoral vote thing. He was expecting his, 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 his deputy to go to, the, to, to uh, uh, um, the American parliament and overturn everything. But he cannot do that. In Sierra Leone, what would have happened? It would have been fait accompli <laughs> because people don't have the courage of conviction to say, mm -hmm. it does not matter what the consequences are, I will do what is right. And honestly, people will always say, probably it's because of your background, you trust mm. in God. Right. I trust in God to the extent of looking at, you, looking at you in the face to say this is wrong. Mm -hmm. And there's this example that I always bring out. Long before... I could even consider myself to say I will one day become a servant of God. I went, we went to the field to play mm -hmm. football. And I was in charge, serving as a referee. Mm -hmm. And um, in our local parlance, but by its game. Mm -hmm. And I was in charge. Somebody will come and say, okay, this is my money. My team comes in next. Everything was fine. And then my elder brother came to me and said, this is my money. Tell the others I came before them. I said, no. <laughs> I will dive you out of my house. I said, go ahead and do that. But I, you, 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 came, you, you came later. The person who came before you, it should be his turn. Mm -hmm. And I was, he kicked me out of his house. But today, I'm sitting here telling that story. Mm. That, I, that if you are to change the status quo, you must be prepared for the consequences. Mm. If you are scared, Things will continue to go bad. I have, I've, I've, I have served in my institution for, for several years now. And by my approach, it's almost every day people tell me, ah, you didn't go sack you. you that, that's what they may take by you the, the, the last time. They will not accept it this time. I said, no, I am not going to offend anybody. Mm -hmm. But what I know is the law. That is what I will speak about from day one to the last day. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing that. I'm still here. Mm. Doing that same work. Mm. All right. You know, so, uh, continue to stay with me. Let, let, um, Rashid, as you respond to the messages, there's a specific message here I want to read and I want you to respond to it. It's from um, Dr. Freddie Lawson. He is in the UK. He is saying, one of your panelists mentioned something about the, consti the, constitution of, uh, the constitutions of South Africa and Kenya. South African constitution is called finest constitution of the world because it accommodated the demands of both the communities of black and white without any domination and drafted on the mutual agreements peacefully. Mm -hmm. The main provisions of the Kenyan constitution 
A, A, it is the fundamental law of Kenya. B, it has helped in establishing the philosophy character, the philosophy character and structure of the Kenyan government. C, it has yes. laid down principles which determine government's power and duties. And D, it regulates, distributes, and limits the functions of different institutions of the state. So he's now saying all these parameters are absent in our constitution in which the president had absolute power with little or no checks and balances. In such situations, you can't have independence of the judiciary. Consequently, the so-called democracy and axillary rights cannot be defended. Imagine the president makes all the appointments to key positions, be it judges, etc. A brand new constitution is needed that will address the fundamental <coughs> issues of governance. So I, I think I agree with him absolutely. Mm. So it starts with the constitutional change. So even South Africa in 1996 constitution ushered in that glorious, mm. you know, phase of their mm -hmm. democracy. In Kenya, the 2010 constitution ushered all of this. So today we are seeing the, the fruits mm -hmm. of the constitutional changes that took place. Right. We are missing the opportunities, like I said. Um, the APC missed that, and this government also is missing that. We need a holistic, comprehensive overhauling of our constitution mm. and making sure that already we have a draft, it's there. Mm. The Justice Cowan, you know, um, constitutional, constitutional review. This, go, this government accept, uh, accepted some yeah, of the recommendations. That's what we're saying. We need, we, we need, Carmel, we need a holistic you're, you're, you're saying we overhaul. Need, we need but, it's not but, but the government has, has, has prescribed a piecemeal approach to it. Yeah. I, I, when I spoke, to, for example, to the Minister of Information, mm -hmm. what he said, <coughs> man, if you did the Atapan, I don't let the give for it. I don't treat you for wood knife foot. Okay. So what we need at the moment is a general overhaul so that we can now start again. That's mm -hmm. what they did. Kenya also did that in 2010. South Africa did that in 1996. So it's awesome that we look at every facet. And we have done the work. The work is there. The people of Sierra Leone endorsed it. Mm. We don't want to go be looking at it on a piecemeal basis to see what suits the political class and they implement. No, we want, the people of Sierra Leone have spoken in that review. So respect them and make, it, make sure we have the holistic. But let me talk to you, I mean, go to your, the, the question you asked earlier about the choice of democracy for Africa's, mm -hmm. you know, yes, um, um, geography and setting. Yes, indeed. It is going to be a difficult choice based on the fact that it's in Africa that we have the weakest of institutions. You know, you might want to advise Africans. Say, Africa, you don't need um, strong leaders. You need strong institutions mm -hmm. because that's exactly what will keep democracy thriving. Africa has weak institutions. So even though I will argue that it's the best of the, I mean, system of government, that's part of the challenges, but we have a, a whole crisis in our hand because our continent, in particular, is characterized with weak institutions. The judiciary, you name it, parliament, you name it, the civil service, the public service, you know, even parastatals. And, and, and ours has been worsened because we have one man determined who goes to, to, to enjoy to it, yeah. the authority of these places. All right? And then we have a parliament also that is not necessarily effective in serving as a buffer all right, against such decision by the president mm -hmm. of our nation. So our problem is, is, is compounded because of these things. But I think democracy can thrive, and we are seeing the examples now in Ghana, in, in, in Kenya. Kenya just resolved a whole debacle mm -hmm. through a legal process. And the, everybody in the country accepted the outcome, and they are moving on without one shadow of blood for the very first time in Africa's democracy. That is a plus. That's something we can learn from. And then look at the beauty about Kenya's constitution. It says, when the president has been elected, announced by the, by the NEC, or, or we call it the Electoral Commission, if there's a challenge, in fact, there's a 21 days window, mm -hmm. if there's a challenge, the court, nobody will swore in that president. Mm -hmm. They will have to wait. The whole nation waits for that 21 days or so period. And the court finish and determine the issue before they before it proceeds. Beautiful. Can we learn from that? See, so there must be a willingness to, for us to do so, some radical I, I, changes. I was told that the other day in, our in, nation in, and our I was told to the other day in Sierra Leone if even the the the, 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 the results are announced um, <laughs> one a.m. One a.m. You'll be so I mean, one. one <laughs> yes. And then and then the next day the president will now the availability the, of the, the chief justice. Yes. The next day the president will now change all the judges and judiciary and the head of judiciary and all of that. So so you, it becomes very difficult now to to get a case so against him. So here is what I'm saying, um, um, Samuel. They spoke about also legitimizing 
or, or le the legislative and national you know, development yeah, plan, framework, yes. which is good. But then it will take a judiciary that is independent and impartial to protect that legislation. Because we have now a culture of many, many legislations have been mm. abused and bastardized at will. Right. So you see, and then the court is not even, we're not even hearing the court's position on that. Even our constitution, the gun norm. So I agree the, the, the best of approach is about making laws to protect our rights and all these things, but there must be a judiciary that will now indict and hit hard on anyone that violates that law that has been passed in the land. And that's what is lacking at the moment. So you see, we come back to the judiciary mm. because they are the protector. Mm -hmm. If you can pass all the beautiful laws, you can have an executive president or a cabinet or ministers that will willingly and, and with intent violate and or abuse those laws. Mm -hmm. But then if you have a judiciary, I will say, when you so do, here are the consequences. Mm. Doesn't matter who you are, we will make sure that you face the... Look at what happened to Zuma. Zuma thought he was still a president. When he was going to an inquiry, he refused to summon himself. And the case went to the Constitutional Court. The Constitutional Court, you know what he did? He sent Zuma to jail for 15 months just for refusing to come before a tribunal. Mm. It's by law. That's contempt. So you see, an effective judiciary holding to account even a past president without fear or favor. That's what is lacking in my country. And I'll continue to speak until we get there. Judiciary must change. You are the hope for the people. Everywhere may be corrupt, but when they run to you, you must provide that panacea, that hope to say, this is the place where we can get resort, and the government will be afraid to violate rights because they know when the complaint gets to the judiciary, the judiciary will hammer them seriously. So the, our hope actually mm -hmm. is about judicial reforms. That's why I'm calling my, so today we were quiet as lawyers. Now, the thing has turned around and we are being hit. We are now crying. The question is, who will speak for the lawyers? That's yeah, the question. That's Rashid. All right. <laughs> let me, Lawrence, let me hear you with regards to um, responding to the messages. But as you respond to the messages, there, there was a specific message I would want you to respond to. The issue of um, us having, I mean, equal distribution of um, state resources. You know, the, the, the Been to Money Free Conference um, brought in an expert, I think, from Kenya that recommended mm. that no single tribe must own more than 30%, I mean, um, work, workforce of, in any institution. So it, 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 it means every tribe should have a fair share of the workforce in a particular institution, which kills the, the issue of tribalism, regionalism, nepotism, and all of that. Should that be the focus of, I mean, going forward, how do we address these issues that tend to provoke unrest in society? Okay, um, the, let's go back to what happened in Sudan that led to the separation of South Sudan from Sudan, mm -hmm. or the creation of South mm -hmm. Sudan. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was as a result of disputes over access to and distribution of resources. Right. Yeah? And so the breakaway faction or the agitated faction now uh, um, um, decided that, oh, we need to create our own state. Mm -hmm. So that led to the separation and the creation of South Sudan. And in, uh, up till this time, even yeah. though there is, there is, I mean, the democracy is still fragile, there is still fight, fighting here mm -hmm. and there as to how they distribute resources or who gets access and control over the resources and so on. So in our case, um, the, during the, the early 2000s, the British um, High Commissioner to Sierra Leone, Peter Penfold, noted, he said that uh, Sierra Leone is one of the richest countries in the world, but sadly among the poorest. He said that the reasons for this are entirely man-made. Just a relatively few people, I quote, just a relatively few people are responsible for the misery and hardship suffered by so many, unquote. End quote. Now, this observation was made by a foreigner. 
the politics is, it has been so for the longest of time. Mm -hmm. Since the Albert Magai regime, from what I've read, mm. since the Albert Magai regime, and it became worse under the Shaka Stevens regime, coming to the uh, uh, Momo, the, 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 the AFRC, REF, and what have you. Kaba did a lot to create these institutions. Yeah? It's about having a genuine, genuine, not other fake being to man it real. I mean, a genuine national conversation on how we distribute power, how we distribute resources, how we promote wealth creation. Yeah? Because it's not just about having the resources. If you examine some of the agreements, currently I'm doing a research on Sierra Leone's debt, public debt portfolio. Startling revelation. And my motivation for this research is the audit report that reveals that our public debt is inflated. I wrote about that. And the parliament, all of these reports are going to the parliament. All of these reports are tabled in parliament. Then they do nothing but time. Parliament. Nothing, 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 this, absolutely. This, 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 but this, nothing. This parliament has a defense that no parliament can, can has, has, has debated any audit This reports. parliament has largely failed <laughs> us. It's not just about the appointment <laughs> or, or confirmation of presidential nominees or, or legislating bills that, 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 that go before them. It's about holding the government to account. Look at some of these agreements, the mining agreements between governments and companies and what have you. What are we realizing from those... I mean, uh, 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 mining rights and privileges that we should have. They just passed the, the, the mines, review the Mines and Minerals Act. How much are we realizing out of it? We are not benefiting anything from what we have as a resource. The and the potential, I'm just coming, right. Samir, just pardon me. The potential for foreign direct investment and local businesses to thrive in this country is very, very limited. Summit. It's very limited. Our business potential is so small. Why is that so? And why have all of these resources? Why is the region? Look at Ghana, for example. Now they are moving into electronics. They have an electronics industry. I was watching news on Joy FM, Joy TV, yesterday or the day before. <coughs> they, are, they, are, they are moving. We are, we are almost 60 or 80 years behind Ghana. Ghana within there. So we're American now, they're 1,000 years. <laughs> they have their own problems, that is true. But can we learn from best practices? Not copy the good things from those countries. So for me, yes, we need a genuine conversation, develop the national framework that we, 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 we are our aspirations for Sierra Leone in the next 50 years. So that I, did not, I need not to be alive to witness it. Even in my dying bed, I am sure and confident that Oh, are they left some team for me generations? I know that even when they, they come up, there is something concrete for them. You understand? Mm -hmm. But we are not thinking around that. One of the things we're going to affect with battling at this nation, if we not put an embargo to this deforestation, if we don't put a stop, slam a sanction on this uh, 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 um, timber logging and blah, blah, blah. Again, for killing at this country, Samuel. Okay. Oh, we are, these are things that we, okay, we see them because a few... People are gaining money from it, or because the government is getting some form of, I mean, uh, 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 um, revenue from it, and so we're all comfortable with it. No, it endangers the future of the country. All right, Samuel, we need to, to look at it. And lastly, it. lastly, you know, Albert Einstein once said that uh, the world may not be destroyed by those who do evil, but by those who watch without doing anything. Some of us are rather born with the innate ability or quality or, char or character to advocate for the people. All right. We realize that it comes with a price. Doc was saying, some man not get the courage because of the reprisal, the attack, or what have you. But dear, let us look at what has been happening since independence to now. Okay. 
the two political parties, where the vicious cycle of hate, deep, subsist, deep suspicion, mm -hmm. resentment, and revenge have continued to fester up to this day. And we're all comfortable with it because and I'm a party then apart, the benefits. Right. The party go over and apart and benefits. Thank you. Reverend, what's your party short? Um, <clears throat> well, too many things to say, but let me just say, uh, there is something I'm going to share with you okay. when we are done. I wrote 10 articles on overcoming the challenges to national unity and cohesion in Sierra Leone. All right. We've been talking ab around them. Um, tribalism, regionalism, mm -hmm. resource allocation. And um, there is uh, um, an aspect that I dealt with, the issue of um, state capture, mm -hmm. especially with what I call entrenched elitism. Now, what has happened with um, those few people who dis call themselves elites, mm. they are in charge of the governance of the state, whether it's from this party or that party, and they are responsible for the problems that we are having. Mm. And we must face up squarely with these um, people that are in charge of these different political parties that mm -hmm. have governed us. To tell them to their face, you failed us. And the people are struggling. The fight that we have in our communities between this party and that party is created by bad governance. If those that are in charge, these elites that have entrenched themselves in these different political parties who are actually the ones that are benefiting, mm -hmm. the ordinary man is not benefiting from their power. If they can give the people the opportunity to enjoy the resources of the state, every fighting that we are talking about will come to an end. Mm. But they are actually responsible for the problems, but who are the victims? The ordinary man, they are the ones who are fighting. Tell me, when we had, for instance, the recent crisis, August 10th, mm -hmm. was there any politician out there in the streets? It was actually the ordinary people. Whether it was a, 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 um, a security personnel that died, mm -hmm. that was an ordinary person. Whether it's a civilian that died, that's an ordinary person. The politicians who are actually fomenting the problems in the country, they sit in their air-conditioned houses and, and drive in those same air-conditioned vehicles mm -hmm. right around this country. And when there is a serious crisis, they have somewhere to hide. The ordinary people are out there, mm. agitating and making demands. But actually, those that are in charge of distributing the resources are actually the pro responsible for the challenge that we have across our societies. Mm. They must consider the implications of what they are doing. Mm. 61 years of independence, what do we have to show? Mm. And um, Lawrence was making reference to certain things that have gone wrong. And I, I want to reference this. That okay. Before independence, we were leading in almost everything in the sub-region. But after independence, see where we are. We cannot take care of ourselves. We cannot. <laughs> and that is, that is a reality that must form part of our conversation. Mm. We must not shy away from it because everybody is suffering. Right. But sure. somebody must take responsibility because there is somebody who comes to my door every five years to tell me, give me your vote. I want to lead you. Mm -hmm. And what has that uh, uh, request resulted to or resulted in? What has happened? Mm. Where are the dividends of this democracy that we are talking about? Right. We want to see the dividends of democracy. Okay. Right out in the West, they are benefiting from those dividends. Why is Sierra Leone an exception? Yeah. Our politicians, mm -hmm must sit up, right. face up with the reality, and know that they have a lot of work to do for the people of this country. All right, quickly, Rashid. Yes, so mine will be um, very brief. Democracy is not a wish. It is um, a process. And there are, there are tenets that characterize a democratic state. We need to see those tenets and uphold them. Free, fair, and credible elections. As I speak to you now, we're having a lot of challenges on the voter registration exercise. That 
is undermining our democracy. It should not be the way, that way. For example, also, we have the issue of multipartyism. There is still a challenge there. Nine months to um, elections, we only have one candidate assured. No, we don't know about the other parties. That is going to undermine our democracy. The issue of protecting the rights of opposition parties, opposition civil society activists, people who criticize the government. You don't need to send them to court. You don't need to jail them. They have to have that free space to hold their government accountable. That's a tenth of democracy. And lastly, an independent and impartial judiciary. I'm emphasizing that because that's the last resort. Mm. That's the place where we all will want to, and then we get justice at the end of the day. Today, my appeal is to my colleagues, lawyers, we came to read law for a purpose. Not necessarily to just enjoy ourselves and then, you know, enrich ourselves. We must serve our country. As I speak to you now, no effort has been made by the Bar Association to even look at the current voter registration process and say something yeah. about the challenges happening. Right. It, to me, it's a travesty. It undermines our very essence of reading law and practicing law to in defense of our people. Let's do more. We don't want, again, another TRC to indict lawyers, indict the judicial, judicial system that we fail our people in this country. So on that note, I want to thank AYV for inviting me. I look forward to more invitations. And I must confess, before perhaps we, I, 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 I close, that AYV has been an example, an example of a media institution that has stood the test of time. You create the platform for all dissenting voices. And as a civil rights activist, I must be bold to say this today openly, that you have been an example, and that's what we want to see in all media institutions in our country. Let's discuss. It's more better than going to the bush and mm -hmm. taking guns and coming to wage war on our nation. Discussion is very important, right. and let's engage and engage and engage, and well, we find solutions going forward. Thank you very much, um, lawyer Rashid Dumbuya, Lawrence um, Williams, and Reverend Jubila Kagbo. We um, apologize for um, the absence of Lena Thompson, a political science lecturer at um, Prabhi College, um, University of Sierra Leone. She called in sick um, late um, today, so um, we apologize for her not being here to have helped us with the conversation. But many thanks to you, our lovely audience, those of you who watched us, who listened, and who followed us on all our different social media platforms. You're welcome. In case you missed a part of the show, watch a, rep um, a repeat of it on Thursday, 10 p.m. But um, same time, same station, and um, next week, so the fresh edition comes up. Um, the show has been AYV on Sunday. My name is Samir Wise Bangura and up next is our AYV Primetime News. Until then, take care of yourself and have a lovely night. watching AYV television.